<laughs> now, the good news. I was wandering distraught along the corridors of power when I bumped into Clive James. Ah, I cried. What are you doing tonight, Clive? Going home, Brian, he said. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, I said. And here he is, and very welcome to the brave Clive James. Clive, you're looking slender, which I assume is not because of the last-minute panic of coming here. How did you achieve this? Well, um, for 20 years I've been battling with my weight, and I've found out that diets don't work. Uh, what you've got to do is you've got to find... change what you eat so you can eat as much as you like. And they've got me onto fibre, and now I eat carpets and hardboard. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the weight's just... Incidentally, uh, Robbie Coltrane's tonsils have just arrived in a taxi. You sure you don't, <laughs> want, to, sure you don't want to interview them? We'll let them rest for a week or two, thank you very much. But why did you do this, really? I was... I was kind of sick of being overweight and sort of nothing fitting. And so it's, it's easy to make jokes about it. When other people start making jokes, it's sort of not so funny. And also, I'm, I'm fanatical about skiing. And uh, being overweight is very bad for skiing. I mean, you can ski OK, but if you fall down, you can't get up again. And I, used to, I would fall down and I couldn't get up and snow would accumulate on me and they would, they would find me next spring. You know. You're looking very tanned. This is because of it. This is snow. I, I've been away for, uh, for two weeks skiing and, uh, and you know, the, the light off the snow is... It's very hot glare and it, it actually tans you. In fact, you're supposed to wear goggles. Mm. But I, I don't like doing that because you end up with a pair of white goggle shapes around your eyes. <laughs> so I didn't wear the goggles and so uh, I've... I've actually gone snow blind, and, uh, and I actually can't even see you, but I can... <laughs> but I, I recognise your voice, and I've learned to trust your tone. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Are you... You're one of nature's skiers, then, I suppose, right? Yes, I, I, was, I was a sort of natural. I started very late, but I found that I went downhill very quickly. <laughs> um, mainly because of my tremendous weight. I used to accelerate like a piano falling out of a window. <laughs> and I very nearly got killed like that last year. On the, I was on the, uh, the World Cup downhill skiing course at Bormio. I was only on it by accident. I was crossing it. <laughs> I, was, I, was crossing, I was edging across it halfway up on the way to my hotel, and the ski instructor said, this is the World Cup downhill course. And the minute he said it, I started to slide. <laughs> they, ice it. they spray it with water so it's icy, you know, because these guys only sort of touch it twice on the way down, you know. Mm. And I started to slide, and my head went down downhill and my skis were uphill, which is a very bad way to be. Yeah. And I started gathering speed. And I was approaching the city of Bormio at terminal velocity. I was, I was actually heading for my hotel. I was heading for the lobby at 100 miles an hour and I was literally going to check out. And uh, the ski master saved my life. He, skied, he really did. He skied down below me and brought me gradually to a halt and he said, you've got to lose 10 kilos. And I, I got out a pencil and paper and figured out how much that was and it was an absurd 20 pounds plus. And since then, I've managed to lose it. Yeah. Being an Australian, you nearly shot through, I suppose. <laughs> <didn't you? laughs> like the Bondi tram. Those interesting <laughs> cut trousers are not concealing plasters, I hope. And you're not concealing, damaged. Oh, sorry, I missed those. Plasters. No. Plasters, plasters. No, no. I, I've uh, I got a few bruises on the hips or something. These are moleskins, and I last wore these moleskins about 15 years ago. Good and now I can fit into them again. I'm because they pleasant. looked like sausage skins last year when I tried <laughs> <laughs> In fact, a, lo a lot of the kit that I'm wearing now I haven't worn for a long time, so it's all very out of date. You know, wide tie. Yeah. Velvet jacket. Have you seen a velvet jacket recently? Not Yes. Yeah, 1955. What's, what's that on your sleeve? That's that's gravy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's caramelata there. But it's very old gravy. It's yes, quality. it is. Yes. I, we, I was most impressed by your documentary program on the city of Dallas. That was that was a super place. And also, you showed again some athletic prowess. You dived into a swimming pool there, and yes, there was no that. trick photography. It yes. was you. It was a very fine dive. Yeah, they called it the Moby Dick shot. <laughs> <laughs> We, what we did, it was, it was a good dive, wasn't it? Yes. It was first take, it had to be, because we couldn't afford to do it twice, you know, London, London weekend budget and everything like that. But um, what we did, we cut the film just after I went in, because you, what you're missing is all the water coming out of the pool <laughs> onto the lawn, because I was very, very heavy. But, uh, yeah, we, we, got, we got the shot. I think it contributed to the atmosphere of carefree relaxation. Yes. Was it possible to enjoy the place, really? Yes, it was, although you've got to realise they have a very high living standard which made me, uh, made me very nervous, especially in the hotel I was in. I was in a, a hotel called The Mansion on Turtle Creek, which some people say is the most expensive hotel in the world, but certainly the most luxurious. And uh, when I checked into my room, I had never seen so many towels. I mean, one human being couldn't use all those towels. I thought they, I thought they put me in with a symphony orchestra. <laughs> and, and they had Nouvelle Cuisine breakfasts that were sort of sliced, sliced mangoes sprinkled with gold dust and all this stuff. It was just 
It was just insane. You went on to Africa then, the comparatively roughing it, I assume. Yeah, it was, a, it was another mission which I was doing for MI5. I can't really, <laughs> I can't really go into details, but uh, we were on safari and it was tough out there. I mean, you're out there and there's just nothing to help you except uh, two native servants who attend to your every wish. Sometimes they rattle the champagne bucket too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> but the night noises, in fact, must be the worst, aren't Well, they? Uh, yes, in more ways than 12. And, because uh, animals go... Th you're in your tent at night, you, you zip up the tent, you know, and you're in, in there and with, with a little lamp and everything, and animals go past the tent on their way to wherever it is, uh, central casting or wherever it is. <laughs> and, um, and some of them are very big. And uh, elephants, have you, you have a, ever heard an elephant go past you in the dark? Oddly <laughs> enough, no. <laughs> Had, it's going to ruin my story. No, I, I know. Well, they're, they're, elephant, elephants are very big. You've got that? Have I established it right? Yeah. Because you, you hear their footsteps, you hear thump, thump. That's all you hear, and you think... Only two. Some two enormous, <laughs> enormous two-legged creatures going past then. Who is it? Sylvester Stallone? Okay. And then there's a pause, and then the other two legs go past. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is big. And you think, why doesn't it step on the tent? And the answer is, the elephant, and indeed every other animal in Africa, thinks that the tent is solid. It can sense it in the dark and thinks it's a solid shape that doesn't want to know about. If it knew that the thing was transparent, it could just step on you, it mm. probably would. But there's another right. solid shape inside, so... Yes, it's all right. <laughs> Much more solid in those days, but, I'm, but slimming already. But it's the very small things that are worst, isn't it? I... I don't like the insects. I, I didn't mind the big animals very much. I mean, the, the lions... The lions were all obviously members of Africa, Actors' Equity, and they, they, they weren't going to eat the audience, you know. Yeah. I mean, they, they wanted a job next year. They were OK. But the insects... I mean, as an Australian, I'm very hardened to insects and spiders and stuff yeah. like that. But some of the African insects are just enormous, you know. They're called mdudu. Or rather, they're called wadudu. One mdudu, two wadudu. <laughs> they are really insects. I mean, they've got four engines, they've got swastikas on their wings. <laughs> You go into your tent, you find one of these in it. Instead of, instead of trying to get the thing out of the tent, you zip up the tent keep it in there. You know? <laughs> Spend the rest of the time outside in Africa where it's safer. You're a great sleeper. You're famous in this building for sleeping. You are... People open office doors, there's Clive hanging another sleep. Yeah, I do. I, um, On the I, floor. I have this knack of, of falling asleep at will, like President Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, unlike him, I also have the knack of waking up again. <laughs> but uh, I don't really need a lot of sleep. I mean, eight hours a day is enough, and 12 at night. But. Uh, <laughs> I just, find, I just find it refreshing, and, and it, 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 you, you can get your energy back that way. I sleep easily on aircraft, for example, which is people That's hardly unusual. I, sleep, I can sleep right through the Roger, Ma Roger Moore movie, you know, and everybody else is sitting there riveted. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I read an interesting thing about people who can't sleep. The idea is you lie in bed and you go back over the things you've done in reverse, so that you get into bed, then you clean your teeth, then you come upstairs, then you put the cat out. You go... And I is that tried... all you did? <laughs> well, I, I went back, and the time I drifted off, I was just reporting for national service. <laughs> So you're not home to stay then, are you? Um, no, I have to. I, I have to go to a few. I'm, I'm booked uh, to go to. Uh, I think I'm booked to go to to China with the Queen in October. And I, I find it's very useful when you go to China to go with a very powerful woman. The Chinese, <laughs> the Chinese respect that. But uh, China is a fascinating place. It's one of the few really fascinating places left because you know, until recently it's been hard to get to. But gradually everything becomes easy to get to. Nobody, nowhere is really very far away anymore except Australia. Yes, Australia was a long way away. Long way away, so you're a long way from home. But don't go anywhere for a moment, because we've got some lovely company to join you. But for the moment, thank you very much, Clive James. Mm -hmm.